Greg, you forgot the Montana GOP event and the event where I introduced my father. You were at both of them. So we actually did 20 events together, Greg. The, one, one of the most interesting events we did was we went prairie dog hunting. Now, you all understand what that is. By the time the New York Times got done with me, we were shooting pregnant dogs. They made a whole article. Donald Trump Jr. in Montana killing pregnant dogs. Oh, my God. The this is the world in which we live today, folks. How nuts is that, right? But Donald Trump was wrong about one thing. Uh, don't worry. It's not a gap, I promise you, man. This one, she's about to have a heart attack. She's panicking. Oh, my God. He said that you would be sick of all the winning. Are you sick of winning? I didn't think so, because I'm not either. That was a great thing. You remember when he, hey, you're going to come up to him and say, Mr. President, please, can we let these other people who've been taking advantage of us for decades, can we let them have a win? He said, no, I'm sorry, we cannot do that. And I'm with him on that one. How about we rack up some wins for ourselves for a change? And that's what's going on. Greg and Matt talked about it. Think about it. Name one economic metric where we are not better off today than we were two years ago. Name one. Last time I was here, I don't know, we did it a minute. There, there was a heckler in here that tried to shut him down really good. But you know what? You remember that. You did that. Name one. If you're here and you want to heckle, come up with something. An economic statistic where we are not better off today than we were under President Obama. Crickets. You know why? Because it doesn't exist. This economy is growing. This president is delivering. This president is the first politician in the history of politics to be killed for doing all of the things he said he was going to do. For actually doing it. Now, the fact that you have a politician delivering on his promises, that's mind-boggling in this day and age. We see a lot of the opposite. We don't see a lot of criticism for it, but we see a lot of criticism for the guy that's actually getting it done. That's nuts. Think about this. The economy right now is so good that Barack Obama is running around trying to say that it's because of him. <laughs> you can't make this crap up. You can't make this stuff up. Barack Obama said in 2016, my father said, why can't we have 3%, 4%, even better? GDP growth. Barack Obama, and I quote, there's no magic wand for that, Donald Trump. There's no magic wand for that. The New York Times back up. Then about 1.8% is the new normal. That's new normal. We can't do better than that. Well, guess what? We're 4.2 as of last word. We can't blame Barack Obama for not being able to deliver. We can't. We can't blame him for having the worst recovery in the history of the United States economy. We can't blame him for that. He had no business talking about the economy. He never hired anyone. He never had someone's livelihood, their family's well-being, dependent on his success. Well, my father's done that for decades. He's had tens of thousands of employees dependent on his success. So it shouldn't be a surprise to us when that guy who's actually done it Someone who's actually signed the front of a paycheck, not just the back. Right? You understand who it is? And that guy can deliver. And guess what you have here in Montana? You have two people that are running that have done just that. Matt Rosenfeld has been a successful businessman. He's done that his whole life. Greg Gianforte has probably created more jobs in Montana than anyone. I mean, he turned Montana into a tech hub. Think about that. And he's willing to work for you guys. Instead of having Swampy, John Tester in there, who's the number one recipient of DC lobbyist dollars. Think about that. Number one in Congress. There's 535 people in Congress. He's the number one guy. How much of that money do you think is going to benefit Montana? How much of that money do you think represents Montana values? If there was a number less than zero, it'd be that. But I think you're right with zero. <laughs> so, they, so he does this thing, and it's funny because you know 
He's been trying to go out there. I saw an interview with John Tester the other day talking about, well, he's a great outdoorsman and hunter. He takes the picture every time he's campaigning. He hasn't had a hunting license in six years. I'm the son of a billionaire from New York. And I've had hunting licenses and fishing licenses in Montana and actually done this. This guy's out there is the biggest fraud in the world. Because guess what? What do we call a hunter who's hunting without a license? A puncher. So John Tester is either a liar and a fraud or a puncher. Which one is it, John? If you want to learn about hunting and fishing, John Tester, come see me. Because I've actually done it. I think probably happy to teach you when you get off in a pit, make it to the pit of those brand new plays orange guard that you take that picture with every time. So this is a guy pretending to be an outdoorsman trying to rally that vote. What's he done for outdoorsman? Ryan Zinke, your former congressman. I put him in the Department of the Interior during the transition period. How much public land has been sold off? Remember, they, they run around, oh, they're selling it all! Nothing. How many acres has been opened up to public access? Millions, actually. Five million acres opened up that wasn't open before for hunting. Something. 
Okay? There is a difference, and you're seeing it in the results. We can keep that going. Okay? But we need guys like Greg Gianforte. We need guys like Matt Rosenberg fighting for my heart because he can't do it by himself. Okay? And I know that we were just in view, we were in view with Rob O'Neill, the seal who killed the lion. Alright? Have some fun with him up there. He gets it. Resolve is important. Having other countries realize that we have guts. There's a better word for it, but there's some children in the audience, so I won't use it. Alright? Because again, what has it changed? Look what's going on in North Korea right now. Right? For 60 years! Zero progress, nothing, threats, nuclear tests, they're sending missiles off. And I wake up every morning for two years and I get to watch the pundits on TV. Donald Trump's doing it all wrong! Oh my god, it's a disaster! I'm saying, wait a second. Why is he doing it all wrong? What have you accomplished in 60 years of doing this? No, 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 I know, I've been doing it for 40 years and you know, this is my life's work. I go, wait a minute. In 40 years, you haven't been able to get a meeting with the decision maker on the other side. You're the expert? My four-year-old daughter, Chloe, some of you know her from Instagram. She has accomplished as much in North Korea as this expert. <laughs> Chloe's not one of these overly woke kids that you know people are making up on Instagram. You know, my four-year-old talks about the existential threat of nuclear proliferation. Like, Chloe's a regular four-year-old kid. She has no idea about North Korea. But neither do these morons who are claiming to be experts. So rather than following Einstein's definition of insanity and doing the same thing over and over and over, hoping for a different result, he changed up the game. Right? The Tomahawk missiles, having a little bit of resolve, following through on what we actually do. Guess what? That conviction means something. The rest of the world is watching. We don't have a spineless leader anymore. That 